I think it's something that that um, kind of the in the popular imagination of consciousness, people don't don't recognize. You know, really, when you're talking about any of the popular movements in Latin America, that madres in particular and women in general, you know, have had this kind of key really role. You know, um, especially in in terms of the of taking risks. You know, putting their lives on the line and the, and the, and it's. Um, I don't think it's something that a lot of people realize, you know, because I think kind of from a sort of first world, you know, kind of perspective of feminism, you know, European and Euro-American women think that they're like it, you know what I mean, that they're the most progressive and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And really what they're talking about is, is you know, being able sort of to kind of compete with the, with the white male structure, you know. And these women have nothing to do with that, I mean, you know, so that's what's kind of beautiful about it is that within the context of their own, you know, their own nations that they're that they're embattling for loss, you know, that they're confronting the powers of be within that context. So I do think that what happens sometimes though is that the that um, so you know, so for me as a Chicana, when I've gone down to Me when I've gone to Mexico, it's been interesting because a lot of people it's like because Chicanos are by and large, our origins are by and large working class, and you know, mo most many of us come from parents que no tenían educación and all of that. So then, when we do that, when I've gone down there, like a lot of them are, you know, really talking. Particularly the more the women that are involved in more popular movements, right, are really relate. I mean, there's really like this really sort of mutual sort of recognition, you know, about who we are. Um, but I think that 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 the the, the politics right now in the United States are so um, uh, reactive, you know, they're really, really, uh, the silence that's going on, the kind of, uh, I, the censorship that's going on among uh, uh, the classes, the poor classes and, and women of color in particular is, as I was saying before, is more tremendous than ever. So, you know, I don't know exactly, I, you know, like for, the Latina to have voice, like the working class, trabajadora, to have voice. There are, I live in Oakland, California, and the, you know, there's a, woman, a group called Mujeres Activas y Unidas. These are fierce women. I mean, they're well organized, you know, they're like developing these like, you know, self-sufficient economies and, you know, businesses and, and you know, so we all always have that, you know. But in terms of sort of an organized movement, you know, of, uh, of Latinas, particularly, you know, across class, we don't have that here in the United States, you know. And it's something in terms of partly as a Chicana feminist, that's, that's always what, you know, I've sort of worked for and with, you know, that we've, uh, you know, that the, you know, I'm part of a group called La Red Chicana Indigena, and partly that's the project, you know, of trying to sort of, you know, um, how it, it, to encourage, you know, those kind of grassroots organizations, con conciencia, you know, um, to be able to also link with each other, that partly we're doing our work, but it's not any anything near any, what we could say is like a, um, a mass movement or something, mm -hmm. you know. And you can really see in Latin America, you know, it's a different history, but, but you can really see how those, you know, those groups that you're talking about, you know, La, Las Madres de Plaza de Mayo, how they surfaced, you know, in this really critical way, you know. And sometimes I think that that the, the repression in the United States is sometimes, it's, it's so insidious that it's almost hard to know how. It's subtle, right? Yes, it's yeah. And it's not subtle, but we feel it's subtle. You can subtle. feel yeah, it, you'll you see it, you can feel yeah, it. Yeah, but you can't, then you're trying to figure out how, because everything looks so liberal and cool and we're all so democratic. And, it, and so it's almost easier to rise up against fascism than a fascist democracy, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And so partly, it's curious, it's a really good question, you know, and I thank you for asking it because it's something that, that you know, in terms of doing that kind of comparative analysis, you know, or, or kind of reflection, you know, it's, it's curious to see what happens then to, like in some of these, you know, it's like some of these women who have been great organizers in Latin America, they come here in the United States and it's almost like it dissipates on you, you know, and uh, because the, the fascism is more, um, you said subtle and I almost feel like it's like, um, it's integral mm -hmm. to the system. Mm 